in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you your way thank you for watching be blessed Jesus Christ while standing I want us to please honor Dr. Emos Fenwa thank you sir such a profoundly humble man of God um I count it a privilege to be here. I thank God for the relationship that God has given. And I've said it and I will say it again, that aside from being a mighty prophet of God and many other things, he is truly a good man. Truly a good man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so I thank you. Thank you for the honor. And this is a minister's and leader's session. And... Um, I trust that in addition to all that we have learned, God is going to be opening our eyes. We rise only to the degree to which our light comes. Hallelujah. He says that you arise and you shine for your light is come. Conferences like these are so designed to address areas of ignorance so that God will grant us grace. And since this is a minister's and a leader's session, I'm trusting and believing and assuming that everyone here is a captain over 50, over 100, over thousands. That means everything you are learning, you are learning for your sake and the sake of the people that you lead. Can we cry unto the Lord to give us wisdom within a minute or two? Father, give me wisdom. Go ahead and pray. The Bible says, does any man lack wisdom? He says to ask of the Lord that giveth unto all men liberally. Here at this conference we receive wisdom. We receive wisdom. Let my life change. Pray. Let my ministry change. Let my business change. Someone praying. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Father. We trust your wisdom and we trust your grace. Even at this session, we pray that you speak to us and may we rise by light. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Hallelujah. Um, I will not want to repeat some of the things that most likely have come from other speakers, but just to honor um, Pastor's request, he wanted me to talk particularly around two areas. Number one, the power of systems and structures, and then number two, finance in ministry. I think that these are two areas where uh, most people have most leaders and most organizations have had struggles. For the average person in ministry, with our context of today's Christian adventure, I think everyone who wants to be serious with God already has systems in place to help them to be serious with God. If you want to learn prayer, there is a system for that. If you want to study scripture and grow sincerely, there is a system for that. Hallelujah. You want to be serious with God, there is a system for that. So the Nigerian church, in the midst of all the challenges here and there we have, uh, I think we've done well in terms of creating templates and systems that help people as far as their spirituality is concerned. But then when it comes to other aspects like administration, excellence, finances, we're still lagging behind very seriously. And this has deflated the passion of many well-intentioned people, even people in ministry. 
So a young person begins ministry with zeal, with passion, with grace, loving God, fasting, consecration. And then you get to a point where the deficiency of this other side now begins to affect that passion. You find out that you're a great prayer warrior, a great word giant. And this applies for both ministry and in any kind of leadership structure. When you start a ministry and it's not organized, 12 of you can meet on the ground, you can shout around, you can meet in a parlor, so you don't have any problem with rent, you don't have any problem with administration. Most likely there's no thief among you. Most likely there's no troublemaker among you. But as the ministry begins to grow, you are confronted with the reality of leadership. And most times we spiritualize it and we ignore it by bringing all kinds of visions and things. But then eventually you will find out to your shock that as spiritual as you are, as called as you are, you are not able to scale beyond a certain degree. You see, ignorance in one area of the kingdom or light in an area of the kingdom will not cover for ignorance in another area of the kingdom. So if you have light in the area of, say, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, it will not automatically remedy for your ignorance in the area of relationships, in the area of administration. Are we together? There is something I call a knowing only syndrome. You find that in Acts chapter 18 from verse 24. The Bible talks about a man called Apollos, verse 24. This man was born at Alexandria. The Bible called him an eloquent man. Let's examine for a minute the kind of um, qualifications this man had. He was instructed in the way of the Lord, so he was not a rebel. Submitted himself to mentorship. He was fervent in spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. There was only one problem with this man. That one problem is the last line. Knowing only. How can a man have all of these things together? Fervent in spirit, eloquent, intelligent. You would think that kind of person should have everything in place. But the Bible says he knew only. Go back to verse 25. Knowing only. Everybody say knowing only. Convincingly, say knowing only. I wonder what else we need to know in addition to what we know. Sometimes what we know can be the limitation to what we need to know. Let me show you another example. Acts chapter 19, please, from verse 1 to 4. Very fearful, scary scripture. In fact, this is scarier than the first we just read. And it came to pass, while Apollos was at Corinth, follow carefully, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, he came to Ephesus, the Bible says, and finding certain disciples. Disciples meaning they had already been saved and were under tutelage or mentorship. Verse 2, then he says to them, he took for granted that they should have known some things. And he said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Now, you know that this was the moment where there was such an outpouring in the church. I mean, it wasn't too long when the Holy Ghost fell. There was revival, outpourings happening. And here are a group of people under very structured mentorship. Now he tells them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Please read with me their shocking response. Are you ready? One to read. And they said unto him, we have not so much heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. My God. So both them and the mentor, what were they learning? That was the dispensation of the Holy Spirit. He was already finding place and there were some zealous people. They were not bad. They were not evil. They were just ignorant. Paul was surprised. You've not even had. They would have just said, we've not received. We've heard about him. We've heard what was happening. We heard that something happened at the upper room. But they said, we've not even so much had whether there be any Holy Ghost. Yet they were disciples. I'm showing you this scripture to tell you that it is amazing how you can be full of light in an area and totally ignorant. Are we together? Now, the challenge most times with the body of Christ is we use the abundance of light in one area to automatically mean that that light serves every other place. No. no. 
It is line upon line, precept upon precept. You need to sustain the requisite level of light that makes you to excel in every area of life. You believe that? Say amen. So when I started my journey with God, because I came from an evangelical background, my passion was just evangelism, love for God, and that was it. They didn't have the privilege of knowing anything about administration, finance, ministry, all these things. It was not even my interest. Our passion was just to fast, pray, press into God, and that was it. And for a while, the Lord allowed that for our spiritual development. But I got to a point where the Lord began to call me to let me know that if I continued on that path without opening my spirit to the other aspects of the kingdom, eventually, the deficiency of this knowledge would affect me in the future. And I'm grateful to God that I paid attention. Now, with all due respect, I, I know people across the globe, some in ministry, some in business, who had a chance to learn the other sides of the kingdom that would have brought balance and holistic excellence to their lives. But either due to pride or ignorance or just emotionally holding on to all they knew then, they refused to open up their hearts. And for many of these, the deficiency is now widespread. It's clear in ministry, it's clear in business, it's clear in leadership. My prayer for you is that as you are gathered here this morning, if there is anything that will cause you tears in the future, may God address it now. Yeah. I'm speaking to a man of God, I'm speaking to a businessman. It's amazing how little things can cause big effects. A small key is what opens a big door. A small padlock is what locks a giant door. A tiny key that you can put in your pocket and even take for granted is what can kick your car. And if that key is missing, as strong as you are, that car remains there together with you. Have you had a key missing and you stood in front, maybe you were hungry and the key that opens the door to the kitchen is missing. You stand angry with food inside the kitchen and yet you are and you complain the door does not listen to you. You are angry. You blame your wife or your husband. The door still does not listen. And then later you just remember, ah, I gave a spare key to someone else. And you invite the person to come. And in less than a minute, that door opens with total obedience. Are we together? First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 let's read together one to read please and if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know this scripture blessed my life and delivered me from pride many years ago i live perpetually in the awareness that there is always something more i can know and when I find areas of ignorance in my life, I don't explain it away. I have no time protecting my ego at the expense of my tomorrow. I throw it away and open up my heart to learn and learn fast. This is the reason why I honor and I appreciate everyone who has come to sit for this conference. Because there are many people here who are senior executives. There are many people here who are business people already doing well. There are many people who are already excelling. That you are seated here does not mean you are limited. It just means that you have a heart to press for more and to learn. You know great people by their passion for more. I'm praying for you in Jesus' name. That the reward for your discipline sitting at this conference, it will speak immediately after this conference. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 24 from verse 3 and 4, it says, Through wisdom. A house. I wish we can get the amplified expression. If, if we don't have that, that's fine. Proverbs chapter 24, 3 and 4. 24, not 23. 24, 3 and 4. Amplified preferably. Thank you. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, a family, whatever it is built. And by understanding, it is established on sound and good foundation. Then it says, by knowledge shall its chambers 
every area be filled with precious and pleasant things. Let's talk for a few minutes about the power of structures. Hallelujah. The first mention of the word church was at a discussion that Jesus was having with his disciples. That should be Matthew 26, I believe. And he said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And the Bible tells us that they began to debate among themselves. Some say you are Elijah. Some say you are one of the prophets. Then he looked at them. He said, all right, but who do you say that I, the son of man, am? And they kept quiet. And Peter, looking at him by the spirit, said, I know who thou art. He says, thou art Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus replies and says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, Peter. He says, but my father in heaven. Then he says, you are Peter and upon this rock, he says, I will build my church. He uses a very, very interesting statement. He never said, I will make my church. He never said, I will birth my church. He said, I will build build my church he uses an architectural and engineering expression when relating to his body he says this church you see will be built it will not just happen it will not just manifest are we together now and if you understand anything about building structures there has to be an architectural design there must be a builder there are many processes that go on and then the actual building at every point in that building they will supervise to check compliance to the plan and everything all the way you do that a lot in your area here you've seen buildings collapse they were built but many times they were not built to specification and as a result they collapsed so jesus says i will build my church meaning that jesus is a builder and everybody who follows in his step who must build anything build your business build your home build your life everything that ever becomes and lasts is built everything that ever becomes and lasts is built a spiritual life robust and healthy is built ministry thriving and flourishing is built business excelling and leading the field is built a home dexterous with great people great couple is built so we have this idea that just because we are Christians things just happen no anything at all that will last and speak for generations is built you believe that hallelujah and every building has three components one the foundation two the superstructure and then three all that complete and finish that structure again one the foundation the foundation is usually the invisible part you don't see it that is the part that is usually not almost not renovatable you see you can renovate a building but if the foundation is destroyed the whole building collapses you hardly renovate foundations you can reinforce it but you can renovate buildings buildings have been broken to be expanded but it is based on the foundation and the kind and the quality of foundation you build determines the kind of structure is that true there are certain buildings you cannot be allowed to build because of the quality of the foundation there are certain foundations that go as deep as a house itself because of the kind of building hallelujah hallelujah so when it has to do with excelling in ministry you must understand systems and structures and the foundation for the excelling of the believer in life and ministry is your spiritual root. Please write that down. Your spiritual root. Let's start from there. I don't care what you intend to do. Whether it is to excel in ministry. Whether it is to excel in business. Whether it is to excel in career. In whatever aspect of your life. You are as powerful as the strength of your spirituality. You are as powerful as the depth of your spirituality now most people ignore god and ignore spirituality in a bid to excel 
in a bit to increase usually if you are in ministry because of your closeness to spirituality most ministers are serious with god i presume but when it has to do with business people and other areas they usually ignore god because they feel like god is a nuisance to civilization are we together i will visit him when i want to do thanksgiving or when i want to give titan offering but as far as all i need is just my brain work you will be learning that except the lord builds a house is that in your bible the bible says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city he said the watchman watched but in vain then he says it is vain to wake up early in the morning and then to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow but that god is the only one who can give his beloved sleep we're getting to a time in our world today where the the advantage of being spiritual is becoming glaring in our world that in one day everything you have can crumble like job except that you are standing on a sure foundation are we together technology has not designed a system to manage witches and wizards technology has not designed a system to manage hatred technology has not designed a system to manage jealousy are we together now all kinds of apps as modern as they are they have not mastered the ability to manage people the wickedness that the bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness every man's excellence in life and destiny is at the mercy of your spirituality because let me tell you the truth everything you have and everything you build will be tested eventually job's life was tested his wealth was tested everything was tested the one thing he had left was his relationship with god and the wife said listen in light of all you have gone through curse god and die and job said no why do you speak like one of these foolish women he says all the days of my appointed time i will wait and it was his spirituality that brought back everything the children the wealth whatever it is that means if he lost his spirituality the book of job will end with a painful tragedy hallelujah it doesn't matter what god has called you to do taking time to invest in your spiritual life and by spirituality i mean your relationship with god enhanced by a robust word life i'm trying to be as simple and pragmatic as possible your prayer life the moment you begin to rise and scale in leadership you will find legitimate excuses to be prayerless legitimate excuses to not give in to you know your word life and all of that it is your responsibility to walk with the spirit of god and keep reinventing systems that keep you spiritual as you grow you cannot use the model for your spiritual life that you used five years ago you were an employee then but now you are a ceo running a company with branches that model will not work you need to stay with god and redesign a model that is bespoke to your life in light of what god is doing so that promotion does not become a cost to your life there are people the worst thing that happened to them was advancement they were better off in that state as soon as you see because when you rise you know this like i do that when you rise in life in ministry in leadership there are challenges that are tailor-made for every realm as a businessman you rise and you now begin to meet colleagues from other parts of the world with their practices and their gods and they have no respect for what you believe in fact they assume you are like them hallelujah so you go to celebrate the birthday of some ceos somewhere maybe colleagues you just met and you are shocked to see what they do there and they do it with confidence based on the assumption that since you are also a ceo that was how you got there it becomes more difficult standing for christ as you grow because your conviction will make you look stupid in the midst of intelligent people and childish in fact you mean you don't drink how did you get here you mean you don't do this you mean you are not in any occult group you are not uh, paying homage to anything there's one they can join they don't exactly kill but they are nice people as funny as what i'm saying is you know i'm not lying this will meet up with you in ministry 
It will meet up with you in business. It will meet up with you anywhere. That's why the Bible says, what shall it profit a man? Huh? If you are not up for profit, you can't meet that kind of temptation. What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his soul? Say spirituality. For some of us, the reason why we have been praying, God increase me, expand my business. You have been weighed like the king in the days of Daniel. And God has already seen that if this anointing comes to this gentleman's life, it will end up being a cost to you than a blessing. Because the level of stamina you need to build to carry that anointing, carry that influence. There are people, if you see an alert of 500 million or 1 billion, you will wave everybody, including God. Thank you. Um, you say, I'm decongesting my destiny. I'm removing everybody and everything that is irrelevant. And God will be the first to go. Spirituality. Spirituality. And you see, you get to a point where when your basic needs are met, you see, in Africa, and, and I say this respectfully, in Africa, the basis for the spiritual pursuit of most people is hunger. Did you hear what I said? Hunger. Not genuine passion for God. Hunger. If you are trying, I mean, if you, if you don't have a house rent, there are causes pursuing you. You saw what pursued your father and your mother. I mean, it makes a lot of sense to run to God. But by the time you build your house or a few estates, business is scaling, life is fine, children are doing well, you will look at your life and say, why do I need, I mean, it does not make sense to still fast. It does not make sense to still pray. I mean, the church is flourishing. We have our property. We have everything we need. What then is the value of seeking God in the midst of plenty? And many people begin to decline. But once you have that covenant of spirituality, no matter how you rise, you can still return and say, God, that boy you found 20 years ago, even though you have lifted him, he has still returned. Because he says, without me, ye can do nothing. I know this is a leader session, but I'm, I'm starting because the spirit of God is calling many of you to say, leave the issue of business first. Leave the issue of anointing and ministry rebuild that altar like elijah said your prayer life is not just bad it's scattered completely your word study life everything has gone away teaching you about finances and structure will only be adding trouble to what is already there the real issue now is not to talk about businesses again or whatever there are many people now you are a man of god but what you need to hear is not ministry what you need to hear is relationship god is saying i've been waiting where you left me five years ago from the day you traveled abroad for administration, you didn't return to me again. I'm still waiting. I can't be that patient. Does this make sense to anyone? Madam, from the day you got married, you left me there. While you were looking for a husband, you banged the door of heaven morning, afternoon, night. Now the husband has come. You say, Lord, thank you. The day I have trouble, I will call on you. Listen, if you think you will never be tempted along the lines of your spiritual life, then you've not been a leader enough. There are things that will happen in your life that the only thing you have to hold on to is the God that you need. Some put their trust in chariots, horses. Some put their trust on anointing. I hope you know anointing can be a demon. To you not to everybody yeah the religiosity of pursuing anointing beyond god can make it become a demon to you preaching can become a demon to you if it takes the place of god anything that tries to steal the position of god in your life no matter how spiritual it is it can destroy you i'm sharing with you my heart this morning because behind the excellence of the people that you see it's not just the mechanics of what they do. It's the covenant of their love for God. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. 
You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Yes, you are everything. You've heard me say, I'd rather give up ministry. Call me a failure in ministry, no problem. I rather give up koinonia a thousand times, give up invitations a thousand times, but if I still have my relationship with Jesus, let the world be shouting me a failure while heaven rejoices over me. I mean what I'm saying. This is not, I'm not a politician. You must mean business with Jesus if you want to see his hand. There are certain anointings, no matter how you pray and fast, they will not come. They respond to the purity of your desire. You must love God beyond ministry. You must love God beyond money. Praying and fasting, if you are not careful, it can become a spiritual system to bribe God. And God says, I'm not stupid. Even though I designed those systems, those systems are only activated when they are engaged by a pure heart. A heart that truly loves God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask us to pray in one minute before I continue. Father, whatever has taken your place in my life, I know that we need money. I know that we need to scale in business. There are many of you, I know that you're trusting God to increase your ministry. You want God to increase your influence, but I want you to cry before your maker in one minute. If you are not praying, it means you are not a Christian. Pray from the depth of your heart. Cast away your golden crown and cry to your maker and say, Lord, purge my heart. Purge my heart. Purge my heart. Someone pray. Pray just for a minute. You are the thirst. You are the stream. You are the hunger living deep inside of me. You are the food that satisfies. You are provision for the journey of my life. You are everything. Lord, you are everything. Hallelujah. He said, and if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men. Let me tell you the truth. There are many of us, what we are seeking can only be found in the presence of God. The Lord told me this, and many of you have heard me say it years ago. He said, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. If you will let men see me. It's not so much an issue of brilliance. There is a place for intelligence. It's not so much of skill. That's why sometimes when you look at some of us, we don't add up, yet the results never stop because there is a mysterious presence that brings completion. You see that now. You can learn every sermon you can, learn every Greek and Hebrew word you can, get every jar of oil you can, not being sarcastic, but if something is wrong with the genuineness of your love for God, you'll be surprised you will never find this thing you are looking for. And don't say my own is I'm looking for money. I'm not called to be a pastor. Those who are looking for money should know God even more than preachers. Because the Bible shows us there's nobody called a preacher fool in the Bible. But there is a man called a rich fool. Are we learning? So, the invisible part of every structure is the foundation. Back to my discussion. You don't see that one usually, but that is what holds the building. And if the foundation be destroyed, he said, what shall the righteous do? So, God is calling us, number one, to dig into that foundation. Now, let me talk about building because for most of us, by God's grace, I presume that God has helped us to a measure 
we are all in this journey stabilizing our spiritual life and knowing God more. There is no exhaustion to the knowledge of God. We will keep knowing him even in heaven. Hallelujah. But now when it has to do with building structures, I want to tell you a few things about systems and structures. And please may I request that we write. Write it down, please. A structure comes from the Latin word structura. S-T-R-U-C-T-U-R-A. Structura. And it means to fit together or to build. The word structure comes from a Latin word structura. It means to fit together and to build. It also means the way by which the parts of a system are arranged and organized. The way by which parts of a system are arranged or organized. You have that down? Please write this. No growth process or result is sustainable until and unless it is structured and systematized. No growth process, no result will be sustainable until and unless it is structured and systematized. That means anything that does not have a system and a structure built into it has no sustainability. Not your spiritual growth, not your leadership, anything that does not have a structure or a system built to it. Now look up please. When God created man, the first man, the first woman, he built a structure within that process. Are we together? And from two people, there's about 8 billion people and counting. In spite of the fact that an average of 8 people die per second, it's not depleted the earth. Because of the power of systems and structures. There are more people being born than people dying. Is the reason why the earth remains. It takes less than a second to die. But it takes nine months to be born. And yet because of how powerful the structure is. The birth rate far outweighs the death rate. Can you imagine? It doesn't take nine months to die. A man stops breathing and that's it. But when a woman is pregnant, from the time she's confirmed pregnant, it will take at least nine months, plus or minus. And you would think because of that disparity of one second to nine months, a day will come there should be only ten people on earth. And yet, because of the power of systems and structures, there is always replenishing. You use this same principle for your finances, you use this same principle. Isn't, is that not the same principle? It takes you a long time to gather, but you can spend or lose in a moment. But because we have not brought structure into it, the rate at which the resources are depleting is by far greater than the rate at which the income is coming. Hopefully I'll round up with that or take it in another session. But I'm just introducing structure for you. Hallelujah. Do you know why you are able to walk from one place to the other? Imagine if you could move your leg just two times in a day. That means you can choose to move left or right. Once you move two times, you have exhausted your quota for the day. Nobody will move. It is the ability, a structure, a skeletal system. All kinds of systems were built in man. And because of those structures, we can move, we can talk, we can do the things that we do. Are we together? This body that you see is a message to all of us that your body is a clue to your success. The very body you are carrying, understanding how your body functions is the key to understanding how anything excels. Because this body starts as a baby body, becomes a teenager body. Your business can be a baby and become an adult to an elder. Your business, are, are you seeing that now? Everything that happens to your organization is already captured in your body. 
And if you understand how the body grows, you understand how ministries grow, whatever it is. Now, imagine, have you seen little children who try to dress like their parents at age one or two? The parents just laugh at them and they know that even if they cry, that prayer will not be answered. That is the same way some prayers will not be answered because of where you are. And while you are praying and shouting and saying, God, I need to go on air by this time. God says, I love you, but you are so ignorant of the attacks that will follow you on your first broadcast. So I will keep you like Moses until you are strong. Are you learning now? Yes. This is very important. This is how God taught me. When you understand the power of systems and structures, this mic, you see, I do not need, this mic does not even know who is using it. It doesn't know my name. And yet, because of structures, it is working. And for every time I engage the structure that makes it work, it will work, regardless what I'm wearing. If a terrorist comes to hold this same mic, will it work? Talk to me. If a pastor holds this, will it work? Another example, agriculture. The rice in your house now, huh? it came from the earth. The beans, whatever you have. And if a terrorist farms, will it grow? If a Christian farms, will it grow? Because of the power of systems and structures. Write the following, please. Please write this down. To systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula that governs that process. Please write it. Don't worry, I'll tie up everything and you understand what I'm saying. To systematize means to make the outcome predictable by generating a formula that governs the process. To systematize anything means to make the outcome, the results predictable by generating a formula that governs the process. Reproduction is predictable because there is a formula. Being born again is predictable. A Yoruba person can be saved. An Igbo person can be saved. Is that true? A Latino person can be saved because there is a system for salvation. Imagine if salvation of every believer depended on meeting one man on earth. But there is a system. A preacher can guide people into that system. Someone can engage that system alone in a room somewhere. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, that is the system connected to salvation. That is the reason why people are saved. So someone can listen to my message and I do not know the person. Someone can listen following this conference now and the person engages that system connected to salvation and he's saved immediately. There is a system connected to healing to make it predictable. The hearing of faith and then the power of God is released. Are we together? How about education? Look at this. Is it possible that a doctor from say John Hopkins, another doctor from say Oxford, another doctor from some prestigious institution here, three of them can meet for the first time at the theater. They've never seen themselves and yet they don't doubt one another because of the power of systems. Nobody turns and says, you are looking too short for this surgery. Where did you say you are coming from? And he says, I'm coming from law. He says, it doesn't matter. Let me look at your hands. What did you, who taught you? No. The curriculum is greater than the lecturer. What makes the, listen, what makes uh, a medical doctor in, say, Lasso or uh, Unilag, another person in um, maybe Ife, somewhere there, they come together and they say we are all doctors and they hold their hands immediately. Do you know why? Because of the power of the system they were submitted to. Systems are powerful. Someone can be filled with the Holy Ghost in London. Another person can be filled with the Holy Ghost in Lagos. Another person can be filled with the Holy Ghost in China. All three of them will meet. And when you say all of you pray in tongues, they all begin to pray in tongues. There is a system. Are we together? Now, most believers do not understand the power of systems. It is the reason why our results are not predictable. 
I hope God is speaking to someone. Now, follow carefully. Systems make it possible for everyone to experience a similar effect. Please write. Systems make it possible for everyone to experience a similar effect. You want to standardize anything, you must systematize it. Systems make it possible for everyone to experience a similar effect. Why do you go to certain restaurants? Because they have created a system and they have standardized everything. When you go, say, for instance, to... I was talking with someone one time to ask why McDonald's refused to come to Nigeria. And the answer he gave me was very interesting. They said they fear that their standards will be compromised. And that it will affect their global brand when they arrive. For that singular reason, they will rather lose the millions of dollars and the billions potentially coming to the largest nation in Africa. This was just my discussion now with the person. And I said, my God, this, they understand the power of systems. And just because they suspect a system will be compromised, they are willing to lose money to preserve the system. Are we learning? Why do you enter a bank in Lagos or enter that same bank in Ibadan and you enter with such confidence and you say, I want to withdraw my money regardless what building you enter. The buildings are not the same and yet you expect the same treatment. I have an account with this because of the system. Any, any structure that has that logo, you expect it to attend to you the same way. Are we learning now? This is very powerful. System. Everybody eats in a similar way or the same way. You go to toilet the same way. That is the reason why businesses can build a technology because all men relate in a similar way. We walk in a similar way. We talk in a similar way. Are we together? So what they build for one will apply usually to all or as many. This is the same principle used in clothing, used in the food industry, used everywhere. The seats you are seated now, nobody's seat is put inverted because of the nature of how you are all of us are the same so it doesn't matter what seat you find we can sit comfortably because we're humans made of the same um the same system that god used is someone learning now systems you want people to experience the same thing you have to systematize your process how do we do the things that we do how do we standardize the results this is the power of systems Another thought on systems. Write it down, please. Systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments. Systems and structures minimize biases and sentiments. When you want to build people holistically in ministry, in your organization, when you introduce systems and structures, they minimize biases and sentiments. Gender biases tribal biases they are minimized maybe not avoided but they are greatly minimized so that meritocracy can thrive you don't bring and say no i don't like you you look dark or you look fair or it looks like you you have the face of somebody that looks like my enemy and you punish somebody who has no business suffering because of biases write this down systems and structures guarantee replication of results Systems and structures guarantee replication of results. That means Dr. Emos Fenwa can reproduce himself. There can be 10 of him in terms of impact, in terms of the prophetic. His uniqueness can be preserved, but he can replicate himself. If you know this as a leader, you will know that it's an error to remain the only one of your kind after a certain period within your organization. You must be able to replicate yourself. When you understand systems and structures, there's no such thing that I'm so unique, I cannot replicate myself. It's a lie. Even Jesus replicated himself in all of us. You can replicate yourself. People will come with different personalities, but you can replicate yourself. That is why there are many professors of medicine. There are many, pro their personalities change. Their tribe, their voices, their looks 
but because of the system they submitted themselves to, you can give all of them that academic credential. Is somebody learning? This is very powerful. Now, write this down, please. Systems and structures provide a basis. I want you to write this one. Soon I'll stop using my notes and I'll start talking. Systems and structures provide a basis for commendation, rebuke, promotion, and demotion without biases. Systems and structures provide a basis for commendation, a basis for rebuke, a basis for promotion, a basis for demotion without biases or emotional interference. When you do not have or you do not run your ministry, your organization using systems and structures, you will not have an accurate basis for commendation, an accurate basis for promotion, an accurate basis for demotion. Are we together? An accurate basis for rebuke. If you rebuke someone, whether in church, based on what? Is it because you were angry with the person or the person defaulted based on a reference? Have you seen why most businesses don't thrive in Africa? Because you can have a personal vendetta with an individual. But once you work with systems and structures, you can shelve that away. If the person deserves commendation based on the ethics of your organization, then the requisite commendation is meted out to the person. If the person deserves a rebuke, even if the person is your blood brother, you take away biases. The reason why many organizations, including ministry, remain lopsided is that there is too much emotional interference. So there are no standards. You cannot define at what point a man should be commended. You cannot define at what point a man is said to be diligent. You cannot de define at what point the man, the same two people will do the same thing. One is forgiven as if nothing happened and the other one is dealt with mercilessly. The moment there are double standards, the organization does not grow that way. Are we learning? As much as God loves every man, whoever refuses to acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ to the point of death will go to hell. That's what the Bible says. We are his creation, but he has left us with the choice and he's bound himself by his integrity beyond his emotion. Imagine if someone now went to hell and God says, you know what, I've changed my mind. He will still be Lord, though. Nobody can judge him. But you say, because of the way you smiled before you died, I will bring you out from hell. No. Anyone who dies without Christ, whose name was not found in that book, they were cast into the lake of fire. It's a standard that applies to all. No matter how nice and well-looking you are, if you are not saved and you die, you are lost forever. It's as simple as that. It is based on systems and structures that we can see that God is just. In Acts chapter 10, they said, we see that God is no respecter of any man, but and in any territory, whoever will pay attention to all of these things, that person will be blessed, paraphrasing. It's important. My life changed when I understood the power of systems and the power of structures. Most people do not pay attention to systems and structures and then they find out that their lives don't go forward simply because they are tied to doing ministry in a certain way without structures how do you expand your services as a minister as a business person you want to reach the whole globe it will take more than just being anointed or having a message in this church right now as this conference is holding there is a media team. Am I right? There is the protocol team securing lives and property. There's the admin team doing their thing. There's the technical people working on this sound. It is the, the, the unifying of these systems and structures that produce this conference you're seeing. When it was time for me to come up, the media team had their thing to do. You saw the way pastors stepped back quietly and allowed them to do their thing. Imagine if he stepped and said, I choose to change this thing or I'm going to be the one to edit it. Now, it would disrupt the system. Most people think because you are a leader, 
it means you have to man every process in the system. It is a problem we have in Africa because we are used to deriving honor from worship. So once you are not in charge, you believe that you will not be recognized. Have you seen people, the prayer band member is the head of technical, is the head of uh, sound, is the head of this, and as wonderful as that is, you find out that a lot does not go well. God gives a great vision but is not executed because people do not understand the limitations to allow systems function properly. I'm able to do the things that I do as a man of God because I limit my things myself to my function, my ministerial and administrative function. There are things I don't dapple into. I supervise based on administration, but I allow people who are proficient in that area. My assignment is to synergize the components and let them work. Did you hear what I said? When you bring people together, allow them to work. Stimulate creativity and give them room and they will surprise you. If my ministry becomes a reflection of my mindset, we will not be where we are today. Because there are many imputes greater than what my mindset would have produced. It is a limitation that we have in Nigerian churches, with all due respect, African churches. The ministry is always a reflection of the biases, the prejudices, the limitations, or the excellence of the leaders. And it ought not to be so. Global brands today, we give credit to the founders, but they know and they've sold that idea to everybody that this brand is the collective effort of everyone. And they are able to acknowledge the various imputes. You look at the Facebooks and all th those people. You think everything came out of the creativity of the person who represents the face of the business? No. No. There are hidden people you have never seen who man their research and development departments who are responsible for the extensive innovations that come. This must be so in church. People celebrate koinonia with all due respect and celebrate all that is happening and they do not know that this man they are seeing only does a minute part of that overall process. Minute part. When you know this as a leader, every time God causes men to honor you, you spread the honor to everyone who was part of the system. That way it motivates them to continue because I wish I had time, I would have shown you why most great visions fail. Because when the honor does not come from the head and reaches everyone, imagine if your leg wants to force itself to touch the shower while you are bathing and says, I don't trust that the head will be, be, be sacrificial enough to allow the water to touch me. When you stand in front of the shower, all the parts that cannot be directly under the shower are patient and confident knowing that the body cares about itself and everything to your feet, it will reach it there. Now, I said all to tell you because, in especially for ministers, we focus on the areas that we consider as spiritual. And I must tell you, all systems do not do the same thing and they do not carry the same implication in terms of the growth. It is better for my sound to go bad than for the prayer department to have a problem. You can buy a speaker in one day, but resolving a loophole that a spirit has had over that ministry will cause a casualty that money cannot pay for. So you cannot place equal value everywhere. There are departments that I supervise myself. There is no yes sir, I supervise myself. Once I pick any signal, I'm visiting them. How are you people today? Let's, what is going on here? Praise God for everything. We need to address this and that. I saw this. I saw that. Let's pray. Are we together? Imagine if I was the head of our media. It would be a mess. You will not even hear about me. Complete mess. You will not, I guarantee you, you will not hear about me. Why am I teaching you this? So that when God tells you, I'm going to make you great, don't imagine one man going to the nations. That is not a wise vision. Cancel that vision and think well. See one man leading a vast army of people, gifted and skilled in every area. You see that now? So that when God brings a prayer warrior to the ministry, you receive him. When God brings a tech giant, you don't say, no, this is a prayer ministry. And the man says, since you rejected me, 
The day the prayer ministry now, God wants the nations to hear their voice. You will find out that you need beyond a prayer warrior. The tech giant who God brought. Maybe when God brought the person, he was not very spiritual. God brought the skill so that you add spirituality to the skill. But you ignored the person. There are people today in our ministry who came as cultists. True story. They came as cultists. But some of them are some of the mighty hands that we have today. Leadership is the ability to harness. Not just to coordinate. You know what it means to harness? To see potential. To look at someone and say, this lady looks stubborn. But I can see that there is a mighty prayer warrior in this lady. This guy looks like he's emotionally imbalanced. But he looks like he's, the, he's going to be the most loyal son that would have come out from this ministry. Any leader that does not have the ability to discern, you will throw good people because you cannot see them. And there are people who will see someone saying, yes, sir, and say, no, in the next five years, this person will cause me pain. It's, it's, you don't have to be prophetic. You can train yourself with the spirit and sustain that ability. There are people, the ones you call great business people today, they have an uncanny ability to pick talents. Before they emerge, you don't bring somebody when he has arrived and want to give him peanuts. That would be too much burden. Most leaders have the convenience and the luxury of versatility of gifted people today because they saw them before they became. And once they emerge today, there is one ministry, and I'll mention it because I'm saying something honorable. The RCCG, you see. You look at the quality of people there. There is nothing today that the Jew wants to achieve that there is nobody, there are few people who God there made. The grace made them. So they can run billions of projects without paying anything because what the, the people they would have paid, their loyalty and his fatherhood has already paid for it. Listen. Oh dear. Do I say this? Listen. I've not spoken about finances, but you will be learning that if you buy everything with money, wisdom is far from your life. A time will come when you will see yourself doing great things. Projects to the multi-millions and billions. And people will not know where it's coming from. You see, your diligence and your keenness of spirit, the ability to identify great minds and invest in them before they rise, you are already paying. That is an investment. Hallelujah. Again, my example. If Daddy Joe lands here now in Lagos and says, I don't have a vehicle to go to the island. It's not rent. Somebody who owns a car company is his son. So the person will not say, use it and give me back. The person says, I've been praying for an opportunity to give you that car. So somebody just has a bulletproof car of 300 million in a moment. And you are wondering. And in your mind, you are thinking he saved business. Grip. No. It is not always about transaction. But it is about investment. Most times when we think finances... I'm just trying to manage and delve, at least touch finances before we're over. My time is up. Finance is not always about transaction, but it's about investment. In a few years from now, I believe, there are people who will come and meet Pastor and say, Sir, for every impact conference, all I need to know, just write the budget for me because you have raised me. It is the prophetic word that came from you. You already have the heart so God can give you the resources. And someone can walk up and say, Ah, pastor, you are doing projects to the billions just like that. When I saw him, I was teasing him at the office. I said, yeah, you are looking never fresh. What is the secret? In the multitude of men, not multitude of ideas, in the multitude of men is a king's honor. Can you spare me five minutes to say one or two things about finances? Did you learn anything? Ah, this man is lucky. Oh. You see how lucky people are now? 
in Africa, we don't have respect for the sacrifice of people. Once you see God lifting people, ah, ah, Dr. Emos Fenwa, great man. I'm sure he's just lucky. Maybe he just prophesied to somebody. No. This training is helping us to see that behind everything that works is a central intelligence system. Even though grace comes on it, but nothing works sustainably by luck. Please settle that. If this is the only message you carry here, that nothing works sustainably by luck. This guy, God just gifted the guy or the lady a nice voice. But go and watch what the person did with the nice voice. The trainings and all of that. Somebody sent me a humorous text one time and said, that I'm lucky I met Jesus and Jesus imparted light on me. He said, you need to come and see what I do with that light when you are sleeping. I am what I am by the grace of God, he says. But this grace was not showered on me in that I labored more than you all. Behind everything that works is a central intelligence system. Grace comes on it ministry that works I learned this because I did not have the privilege of learning administration all the people we had who were mentoring our lives they were sincere people but the context of ministry from the environment where I came from did not bring this versatility and I had to outsource let me tell you this for someone listening God is saying kill those excuses now don't say my father was not a CEO there is a CEO somewhere you can humble yourself Go and intern there. Refuse to collect salary. Collect what is greater than salary. May I respectfully refer you to my message, Redefining Inheritance. I teach there on five things that qualify to be called inheritance. The first is a man's conviction. You have not received anything from a man if you don't receive his conviction. The conviction of a man is the greatest inheritance you can receive. Money and material things is the least, the fifth of them. His inheritance, his convictions, his name, his relationships. Hallelujah. And up till today, I continue to learn. I'm a student of knowledge. I admit the areas I do not know. When God opened our ministry to an international scale, I needed to learn the ethics. You don't go to another nation and do ministry the way you are doing in Nigeria. First, they will arrest you, number one. Because we, are, we compromise on many things here and go scot free. But once you are outside, there is a lot of meticulousness. And that one is not just the issue of prayer and fasting. There is an exact intelligence that comes to it. How do you raise people? How do you train people? Let me stimulate your mind for one minute as we just leave this area. How do you build teams? How do you build a strong pastoral team? Do you have a system for raising sons? Or do you just raise people and keep random picking who is getting more anointed and say, you look serious, come. How do you standardize raising people? How do you guarantee any product that comes out from you? Whether spiritually or the rest. If you are in a ministry and there are five people you have raised, can you guarantee consistency of character? Can you guarantee consistency of delivery? Is there something exact you are teaching them or you are just hoping they all become, then you claim ownership of their success. There are trainings every once in a while. There is no facet of our ministry that outgrows training. None. Not me, not anyone. You see, there are periodic retreats where exact things are taught. There are a few questions every organization must ask in creating systems. I don't have the time. Why do we exist? How do we behave? You must know the modus operandi that governs that ministry. If a pastor comes under this ministry and he's preaching and he's teaching, there are behavioral patterns that are consistent with the vision so that you do not have everybody just coming to do everything. You see that now. I know there is order in this church. So if I'm preaching and you rise up and you, you want to prophesy, I will ask you to sit down. It, is in, it doesn't matter what God is telling you. 
is inconsistent with the modus operandi. Are we together now? So there's no chaos. You don't stand up and, and just shout, no. If I'm preaching and you fold money and throw it to me, I'll ask you to come and pick it and keep it. You can practice somewhere, but there is order. If you want to sow a seed, there is a way to be done. First Corinthians 14, 40, that all things be done decently and in order. Listen, do not allow time and trends to create the patterns that you run your ministry or you run your organization with. You will get into trouble. What are they now doing? Let's incorporate it. That is dangerous. There are things you can add, but there are foundational values that define who you are. If you lose it in business and in corporate life, we call it your corporate identity. This is what defines you. You don't go to NMPC for treatment from malaria. No. NMPC is not a hospital. You don't go to Unilag to fuel your car. They are so designed with a corporate identity. The identity is what attracts the people you are looking for. Are we together now? Before we left Abuja, I was asking my people, one of the, you know, the, the, the lounge, I said, why is there no restaurant in this place? And then one just told me, he said, there's a restaurant here, but it's hidden. I said, you see now? God has called you into a healing ministry. Have you designed and branded everything you do such that those who need your grace know where to find you? Or are you just assuming? In gathering is a function of intelligence plus grace. Noah prepared the ark. God brought the animals. You don't bring the animals to kill while you are trying to prepare the ark. No. There are many preachers, those who need them, do not know where to find them. Unfortunately, social media is not where they will find you. You have to brand your impact by limiting your activities and channeling your strength to project the grace God has given you. This is a prophetic ministry. Anybody who comes here knows there are many aspects. Your pastor is a great teacher. He's a great man, great pastor. But one thing that strikes him out is that prophetic grace. So he can stand in the midst of 30 men of God and is the one thing that brands him out. Most of us are losing our identity trying to do what brings everybody. There are things I will never do. It's not part of what makes me me. It is good, but I will not do it. It is unnecessary as far as selling the spiritual value God has given me is concerned. Are you learning now? So you have a restaurant and your restaurant looks like a petrol station. How do I come there to eat? There is nothing there that calls my attention. You are a great healer with great grace, but there is nothing around your life, your teachings, your personal, there is nothing around you that sells that value. When Jesus arrived, his manifesto was clear. I've come from heaven to bring reconciliation and for the rest of my stay, I will sojourn advocating the father's agenda. He stood up for to read in Luke chapter 4 and they brought to him the scroll of Isaiah. And without missing words, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, recited the manifesto of his arrival. And from that time, there was no distraction whatsoever. There were many wonderful things Jesus would have done, but he was limited to what branded him. Men do not buy products. They buy perceptions. They buy perceptions. That is the reason why people can buy things that are not profitable to them. But because it carried a perception of value. If I carry a particular drink and I peel away the, what they call it now, the wrap, and I tell you to to buy it at that amount, you will not buy it again just because I removed something. For someone, God is telling you, go back and put your ministry, your organization in order. Define your activities. Does it reflect your call? If you are meeting me for the first time, what can you say about me? It doesn't matter whether you meet me in a wedding ceremony, in a burial, or on stage. Everything around me should speak to what I represent. Are we together? So if you are a tailor and what you are wearing is not correct and you are saying God knows, it's only God that knows you are a good tailor. 
Those who need you do not know you are a good tailor. It is your assignment to make them know. I'm sorry, but I hope I'm not wasting your time. Hallelujah. You must be in defense. The Bible calls everybody must be a fanatic of their vision. What they are called to do. When you come for koinonia, there are certain things you must experience. From the gate, the atmosphere, the ambience, the way the service was designed. It was designed to do specific things. Not everything. Specific things. And rating whether we have done well or not is number one, based on the truthfulness and the spirituality of the impact. But number two, the compliancy and the consistency. So if I rebuke someone as a worker, I'm rebuking the person with respect to the standard created. Are we together now? If you are supposed to be hospitable and you default, you earn a rebuke for yourself. It doesn't matter whether I, I love you or not. Because you have defaulted, there is a reference. Many parents, with all due respect, do not have a system for training their children. They just discover one loves God, another one is a criminal, another one is less as fair about the things of God. And then they just lay claim. There was no system for prayer. There was no system for Bible study. Every time they call for prayer, it's an emergency. Either daddy's money is locked up somewhere and he wants the thing to come down fast. Then an emergency prayer is called. So the children do not know that prayer is part of the growth process of an individual. Versus a family where right from infancy, the children are trained. A system supervised by the father himself. The children may not know what they are doing, but they are being immersed in the system. Train up a child in the way he should go. So the first thing you need is to put together the way he should go. Then you bring the child into that system. Are we together? I will never run anything by luck. When God began to grant us grace to hold conferences across the globe, I went to settle down to study what models are available for an exceptional conference. How do you gather tens of thousands of people across several nations and you are here? Right now, with all due respect, whilst we are here, there's preparation going for all of our conferences in US, Canada, UK, all at the same time. And I've not traveled to go and see anything. The power of systems. The first day I will be entering that auditorium will be the day of the conference. And yet I have confidence that nothing will fail. That's how powerful systems are. <laughs> Otherwise, as a man of God, you would die of heart attack. You will suspect everybody and say, okay, that 10,000 that was, how are we sure it arrived? Let me see. You, you don't have that energy. 24 hours was given to do what is pro-destiny. You cannot be involved doing everybody's assignment. The power of systems. How do you get people to do what you are doing? If God gives you an, an assignment now to go and establish a hospital in your village, do you understand the system to build it? And where you do not know the system, do you have the relationships you can leverage on? Because relationships are part of system building. You are as powerful as the relationships that support you. No nation fights without verifying their allies. You see that now? Even America, as one of the most powerful nations, before they fight, they have to verify that their allies will stand with them. Let me give you three assignments. Number one, go and study, define the area God has called you. Define it. Don't assume. Don't say I've been called to preach the gospel. You are right, but you are wrong. The great commission is everybody's assignment. It's not unique to you. Define what part of that great commission was given to you. Define it. Number two, build strategic relationships that become investments for your advancement. If you do not know how to do anything at all in this life, spend the remaining part of this year building strategic relationships. Who likes you matters. You've heard me say it. In this kingdom, who hates you does not matter. But who likes you matters. Even Satan is not hated by everybody. There are people who like Satan. Terrorists have wives. Hello? So if everybody hates you, there is a unique problem with you. 
God designed it such that everybody cannot hate you. The devil as the devil is loved by people. Not in ignorance. Jesus as loving and compassionate is hated by others. Don't mind those who hate you. But pray that the right people like you. Because one person who loves you can hold your hand and distill knowledge. Knowledge that he spent 10 years. I have benefited from the intelligence and the sacrifice and the scars of people. In 10 minutes, I received knowledge that defined the next decade of my life and in ministry. Let me ask you a question. Is there somebody in your life today who can be there for you when you need them? Without you begging them, without you buying them, without you manipulating them. Does someone love you enough to think your life is worth their committal, their attention? If the answer is no, let this be your project from this leader's training. You can build your product and be alone. You will still fail. You need men. Business is about men. Everything is about men. Transactions is about men. Kill every man on earth and open all the banks and the safe. The money will do you no good. What gives value to money is men. When I learned this, I stopped wasting my time on things. You are as powerful not as the things you acquire, but the men who stand with you. It is men that give value to things. Businessman, let me remind you again. It is men that give value to things. One man can endorse your business and beyond your mental capacity you will rise in an unfair way. It will be clear. And Africa is so graced because we are a people who value relationships. One man can tell you help this person and even though you don't know the person, on account of that one person you can lift that person. Truly, in Africa the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. I have risen today not just because of grace. It's been a product of the endorsement, the goodwill of many strategic and sincere people. The gates of certain nations were opened at an executive level because of who introduced me to the nation. Not just because before I was introduced to those nations, people were listening to me. But because of the caliber of the people who introduced me, I, I came into those nations with honor and with grace. It does not just matter what you sell. It matters who speaks for you. It matters who speaks for you. Thank you, Jesus. It matters who speaks for you. You see that there are so many things to say. My apologies. There are two ways to prosper financially. Let me wrap up there. And I do not downplay the intelligence of the vast resources, business resources we have in this place. There are people who are graced and gifted in that capacity beyond what I will know. So I do not claim to speak from a standpoint of intellectual mastery. But I can tell you that there are a few things that when you handle, the results show. Just two keys, and then we'll wrap up for now. This money thing has caused a lot of problems for people. There are people who are depressed today. Money made them so. There are people who have lied to their wives and husbands today. Money made them so. There are people today who are going to hell. Money is what is escorting them to hell. There are many programs of the kingdom today that cannot thrive because of money. Only God knows what it costs to put a conference like this together. By privilege of leadership and what I do, sometimes I nod my head and I say, any man that God does not help, you will either compromise or you will die. That is the truth. I'm telling you with, with biblical honesty. There are certain helps if you don't receive from God. You will either compromise at the detriment of your integrity or you'll be on your way to hell. Lack of money will make you do three things. You will steal. You will lie. Stealing is related to poverty. Lying is related to poverty. Are we together? You will steal. You will lie. There are many other things. You will worry. You will compromise on your integrity and do it again and again. 
When God wants to increase a man, God does not give the man ideas first. God helps the man to understand his ways. I just spoke to you about the power of systems. A great and loving God will not put inhabitants in the earth and allow people to freelance their way into abundance. That does not look like a God of love. There must be a system that has been put in place. Please listen to me. We're wrapping up. My life would change in 2007 when uh, by a number of visions, God granted me an encounter and I began to study on finances, even relating to my life and relating to ministry because I didn't want to do ministry, telling lies, manipulating people and I knew the kind of call God had given me and this call will require a lot of money, a lot of money, a lot of money. Ladies and gentlemen, you have no idea how much an average pastor spends running one service. Hallelujah. You get into doing projects with the millions and the billions and your integrity should be kept. And you are not supposed to harass people. Don't keep quiet over the issue of money. Be open about it and learn it. Don't live in denial. You will pay the price you live in denial, it will catch up with you one day. I guarantee you. Except you don't love Jesus. One day it will catch up with you. And when we talk about wealth with respect to the kingdom, we are not just talking of having your house, your car. No. Yourself is too small for that agenda. The purposes of God is bigger than our individual self. We are talking of being empowered for the purpose of the kingdom. Hallelujah. There are two ways money comes. Number one, value. Value. Every time you see money come into the life of a man, it comes in honor to value. Value that is needed and useful. Please write that down. There are many people who believe they are valuable. If I don't need what you carry, I will not pay you for it. Even though what you are carrying is important. It must be important to me. Your value must not just be available, it must be needed and useful within the context of a civilization. Value. Number two, favor. If you don't believe in favor, good luck. I don't have much to tell you. I will meet you after 10 years of your life and leadership. And I'll be willing to guide you back to repentance. As you rediscover the harsh reality of living in today's world without the favor of God. Hmm. There are some things value cannot do. It takes favor. When God wants to accelerate you, he connects Lot to Abraham. Lot was not a businessman. He just was connected to a man God was blessing. There are many ways to prosper. You can prosper up transacting your value, but you can prosper up the favor that comes through relationships. There are many dynamics to it that may not be discussed here, but it is sufficient for you to know that if you ever touch your pocket and it is empty, if you ever touch your account and it is empty, let me diagnose it for you. Number one, your value is not being needed and useful or you are not transacting it intelligently to a targeted consumer base. This is what we call business. Business is not just the art of selling. Business is the art of selling to those who can recognize, appreciate, and reward that value. Most people say business is about selling. I don't agree. Well, I agree, but I disagree. Not everybody has what it takes to appreciate the value you carry. If I'm not hungry and you are selling food, your food is right, but you will still be poor with respect to my patronage. Your value must be needed and useful to me. I must be willing to recognize. This is why I'm going to pray a prayer for you as we wrap up. That God will relocate you to those who have the eyes to see what you carry. There are many of you who are gifted but your audience is a wrong audience. You are shouting to people who have no past. It is a terrible thing to be in the midst of people who have no recognition of what you carry. Shame and disgrace and dishonor is what trails you, even though you are gifted. Joseph interpreted three people's dreams. Two of them did not have the power to help him. But when the king dreamt, the same man with the same gift became a prime minister. 
it matters who you interpret, whose dream you are interpreting. Many of you are selling great things, but to people who only have the ability to admire what you carry, but not to reward you. This is one thing God helped me do. And it is the spirit of God who guides you. There are many preachers today, some of you seated here, if the right people hear your sermon, you will never be where you are again. I have met preachers. I have met prophets. I have met great people in my life. And sometimes when I listen to them out of compassion, I say, my God, why is the world not hearing this person? I have met musicians. I have met worship ministers. Now, by God's grace, I've met a lot of people, but I've met some you do not know. And when they sang, I was almost saying, look, let me carry you and come and tell the world, listen to this person. And yet they are still there. The grace for visibility is when God puts you to the right audience. Listen to me because I'm going to speak it to your life. There are many gifted people today. They should not beg with the kind of value they carry. The right people. I know men of God who have been helped by God today. Because God sent them to sincere people who became sons of consolation. They helped them and communicated such spiritual value. And the people say, your assignment is my assignment. And single-handedly, they ease off that burden of pain. And the people can focus on serving God. My life today is a product of the help of many people. The help of many people. God brought strategic people to my life. God placed an audience before me by his grace and by his spirit that when they had me, they said, this is the person we are willing to invest our lives over. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Spirit of wisdom, rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Oh, oh, rest on me. Oh, 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 rest on me. Spirit of wisdom. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your life. If you're a businessman here, please listen and open up your heart. We do these things as touching the grace that God has provided. You're a man of God. God is helping. Do ministry with integrity. Don't get into compromises just because you are looking for advancement, likes, follows. Leave all those things and stay with God. Learn some of the things you've learned now. If there is anything I want you to leave this place with, is the value of strategic relationships. Ah, yeah, the, my spirit is boiling with some things I would have wanted you to hear. Hmm. We don't rise by luck. There are things when you handle, there is nothing the devil can do about it. I want you to believe me. You see, the grace to make it happen comes from God. But building the intelligence that justifies the grace is your assignment. While you are waiting for the grace to arrive, your assignment is to build the mentality and the intelligence. The value of the anointing is when it comes upon a mind that is transformed. When the anointing does not come upon a transformed mind, it loses its potency in the presence of a mind that is still transformed. This is the reason why impartation only has value when the word precedes it. It corrects your understanding. Then the grace can rest. Now a good job would have been done. It is not a very difficult thing to rise. I will tell you sincerely. The Bible says the labor of the fool wearied every one of them. Because he knoweth not how to go to the city. This finance thing you see. There is a way out of it. I want you to listen to me. Without compromise. There is a way out of it. If you are guessing. You are wrong. You don't guess how to grow. You don't guess how to give birth. You don't guess how to treat a patient. There are people called consultants. As haphazard as the human body looks, 
science has been able to bring a level of predictability to treatment. They use robotics now to do surgeries. That is how accurate it can be. Once upon a time, people would just say, well, let's just, if God brings a, a boy or God brings a girl. But now, science has gone so much, there is gender selection. There is gene selection. Science has demystified some of the things that we just left all to the spirit realm. You, your life can be that predictable. The haziness around the subject of finance is because there are few people who have studied it. The whole finance is full of arrogance. It's the reason why there is no learning. Because everybody is claiming once you can eat, people believe they are prosperous. No. Prosperity, genuine blessing is more than the ability to eat or having a few millions in your account. There is a dynamic that when you understand, you can transfer to your children. You see, so the disinterest, and then because of the abuses, unfortunately, that have happened around the body of Christ, exaggerations leading to manipulations, carnality. So in order to manage it, there are people who just threw away the subject completely. It is wrong. If we throw away this, our children's children will suffer. I tell you this. I made up my mind that some things will stop from me forever. I have served God better, been helped by God financially than otherwise. Because I have the convenience to do many things. It is easy to remain with integrity when you have the resources to defend your convictions. When you do not have the resources to defend your convictions, you will compromise because you are the mercy of systems and structures. You can stand even if you are alone. The resources, the wherewithal to defend your love for Jesus is there. Please, I want you to pray one prayer. Father, it's time to rise. It's time to rise in ministry. While you are praying, I'd like you to see your ministry, see your business shifting to another level. Not by luck, not by chance, upon the abundance of light. Please pray. Whether you are just starting ministry, business, leadership, whether God has strengthened you to a measure, there is always room for us to rise. Take a minute, we are wrapping up. I assure you this experience is worth your time, worth your sacrifice. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Please look at me. Do you think... You are going to be happier and you will and you will be a better christian if you go forward be honest do you think so do you think that when you are able to impact more people for jesus whether in business or ministry psychologists teach us that the singular reason for happiness is progress that people only feel happy and fulfilled to the degree to which they feel that they are making constructive advancement is the reason why we hate delay and stagnation because it's a statement from your destiny to you that you are not moving forward anything you keep in one place starts dying is that true everything that has kept you down that will not allow you to make progress i stand in partnership with the grace upon god's prophet in this house and in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, I shift you to a new level. In ministry, I shift you to a new level. In business, I shift you to a new level. By the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Everything that has stagnated your destiny, you're a man of God, you came here, you are sincere. But you've exhausted your knowledge and nothing is working not increase in membership not word impact not results coming from ministry i strengthen your hands by the spirit from tonight in the name of jesus christ may you rise and begin to do much for the kingdom hear me every business here that is dying is in need of a relationship beyond an idea did you hear what i said every business that is not doing well 
your bailout system is not just an idea ideas are at the mercy of the men that support and promote them ideas are useless if it's alone the same way the seed is useless in the man until the woman comes that is when fertilization happens and the woman's womb is useless until the, it takes a union be fruitful means be relational nothing is fruitful in isolation Therefore, I pray for you. The strategic relationships that need to connect to your vision in this season for your growth and for your acceleration, may it rest upon you now. May God connect you to strategic people, strategic people in Lagos, strategic people in Nigeria, strategic people across the globe. In the name of Jesus. Hear me. Everyone who has spoken to the ears of your helpers and has made them to turn against you because before you arrive, your helpers they have they told them something. Harish Kali Kaparato Siata. I stand by the spirit of the living God and I pray, may the Lord turn the heart of your helpers towards you. Turn the heart of your helpers towards you. I'm praying for everybody. But this is particularly for ministers of the gospel. Listen, we need help. I pray for someone here. You are trusting God for help. Financial pillars that stand with you. Because you want to keep the integrity of the faith. I cry unto the God of my covenant. That in the name that is above all names. May God raise strategic people to stand with you. Strategic people to stand by you. Strategic people to stand for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. It is valuable to live a rewarded life. Not a life whose value is admired. You need to live a rewarded life. To be rewarded means to be compensated for the value you dispense. Whether that value is sold or it is given freely like preaching. We thrive when our value is rewarded. I live a rewarded life and I am encouraged doing that. I don't serve God because of money. But the fact that someone can be blessed by your spiritual value and can communicate benevolence to you, it becomes a consolation to your loving God. When you spend time praying, you know you are not wasting your time. He's bringing all kinds of benefits, including supplies. Therefore, I pray for you. Those who need to be positioned by God to help you live a rewarded life in this season, may my God bring them to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please let me encourage you. I want you to invite everybody that needs to be here. Many of you, whilst you are standing here, you are regretting now because someone you so love should be here. But they were not here to hear this. Make sure you invite everyone who are here in the evening and for all the other sessions. May the Lord bless you and increase you in Jesus' name. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Kata Branda Katekatos Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the The face of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.